Hey, Fuckland, don't forget Mother's Day is coming up pretty quick, and our good friends over at FantasyChamps.com are hooking the footballers up with a great deal. Right now, you can get 20% off anything you want over at FantasyChamps.com with the code BALLERMOM, and not only do you get 20% off, you're going to get free same-day fulfillment, and it's going to come with the MVP award for mothers it's this cool medallion that's talking about the queen of quarantine the hand washing warrior the homeschooling hero so you can get yourself some cool fantasy gear over at fantasychamps.com with the code baller mom for 20 percent off plus free same day fulfillment and you're going to get your mom hooked up with a cool medallion check it out at fantasychamps.com hey this is austin eckler and you're listening to the fantasy footballers podcast Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, May 5th. Andy, Mike, and Jason. Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Tuesday, whenever you're listening. We have a Dynasty Differences show today, a little something special. Mike uh, prepped up a nice drop mm. for a mm. brand new mm. segment. Mm. It's uh, something a little different in these <laughs> little, Dynasty Differences. A little tasty treat. Let's yeah, get the alliteration going. Very good. It's very good. I am still recovering a little bit from... Episode six of the Jordan documentary, where oh. my childhood sadness was brought forth uh, I as a not like that part. <laughs> Phoenix Suns fan in the early nineties. I was nine years old when my heart was broken into a thousand pieces by Michael Jordan, who selfishly wanted more championships and couldn't give us one. Mm. Sorry, real jerk sorry. move. If I'm I honest. plan to get over that loss sometime in the next fifty years. Interesting. Hasn't, ha- hasn't Interesting. happened yet. I was going to say I'm. I uh, I was up very late watching the Jordan documentary, so I'm a little bit sleepy today. Oh, okay. That, that's and your contribution to yeah, every Jordan's conversation. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan strikes again. Yeah, <laughs> my goodness. Um, but, yeah, we have a great show for you today. Good quick question about a player that I know Al Borland, our, one of our producers, <laughs> des, de, despises. And uh, Judge Giamatti is here. Brooks, how are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, I knew that already. I knew that already. He's been doing great for three years plus. <laughs> been doing just as fine. As long as I've known him. As long as we've he known is, him, he's been doing he great. all right. Thanks for checking, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> just in case it goes sideways. <laughs> Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. One, one of these times, man. Yeah, one, you're, he's just gonna unleash on you, and you'll just, never see it coming. You know what? <laughs> it's going pretty decent. Oh, that would be rough. I know, I know. Uh, youtubecom slash Footballers. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit. We've got the Dynasty and Rookie Rankings, and a brand new. Top 50 overall dynasty rankings. Uh, they're all in the Ultimate Draft Kit early release. You get access right away. The full Ultimate Draft Kit releases on June 1st. We are knee deep in all of the statistical analysis necessary to give you player projections for each and every player for the upcoming year. Uh, the Ultimate Draft Kit is a living, breathing, always changing, always updating resource for your draft so we're very very excited always proud of uh the work that goes into it from our team and you can check that out at ultimate guys want to do a little little sony a little, michelle quick little, question yes I believe you've met my fitness consigliere <laughs> michelle <laughs> whoa right. man that that thing that, hasn't been busted out in a long time no it wasn't even in the drop board mike i had to go searching for it it was <laughs> it's been a long time since we talked about sony michelle Fortunately, it's been a for, long time since there's been something to say. You know, it's like he sucked last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, take away Tom Brady, Jason. That's the key. 
All right, Daniel Beveridge asked this question for us. What is your outlook on Sonny Michelle in New England this year without Brady? Still have James White, Rex Burkhead, Damian Harris on the roster. Obviously, Sony was a first-round pick in 2018. He dominated the 2018 playoffs, which produced zero value for fantasy owners other than uh, expectations that were unmet by Sony in 2019. The old Damian Williams. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we should talk about the Damian Williams news too uh, in a in a little bit. But Sony Michelle, what are your actual expectations? He will be twenty five years old heading into the season. He had two hundred and forty seven carries last year for nine hundred and twelve yards, seven touchdowns. I think Narrative Street says this team will need to be a defensive run first squad this year, as uh, Stidham or somebody else acclimates to you know, game management quarterback position, maybe. And so do you, do you think Sony's in that category of forgotten players? Let me ask it that way. He's certainly in the category of unwanted players. I, you know, the, the Jordan Howard, no, <laughs> that I mean, wasn't that, the question. Well, but that's what makes people, I mean, I, I don't think you forget. I think you just don't want them like a Jordan Howard, uh, Sony Michelle. It's not that like, Oh, I, Completely forgot about that person. It's just you—you you, you don't see the upside, and specifically with Sony, here's a back that isn't a pass catching back, who now is really a touchdown dependent player or has been in his career so far. He gives great fantasy outputs when he, you know, gets that goal line work, falls into the end zone. But I would have to imagine that the offense does not improve this year that's at least the projection so if the offense overall is going to score fewer touchdowns they might need to rely on sony a little bit more but for fantasy you know if if his carry volume goes up and his touchdowns come down because he's not a pass catching guy i, I think he's someone i will be avoiding and i still i had like hopes because james devlin you know they're 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 great fullback who you know when sony had him last year in like three games sony had good games he retired so you know, now, now that's, you know, another strike against him. So I'm, my outlook on Sony Michelle is negative. I don't think there's much of a ceiling to Sony this year. I think that's the truth. And that, that stinks, but it's, it, you know, 3.7 a carry last year with Brady in that offense, other backs to be a part of, um, you know, Bill Belichick's weekly decision-making. That's and, what I wanted to highlight was the yeah. we've already we've had the whispers earlier in the offseason that Damian Harris will actually be involved. He was a third round pick. Am I remembering that right, Jay? Third round pick last uh, year. It was yeah, I th I think that's right. He was decently high. I'll I'll bet. So like he's around. He's a talented running back. Rex Burkhead will still be there to get his at least right now to get his six carries. But you just when, when the ceiling has already gone down because of the offense, the unknown factors that you like it's it's certainly in the realm of possibility that the Patriots go into the season and they're using all four of these guys like we we just don't know that's one of the the variables you have to factor in when you're drafting someone like Sony Michelle so it, it Jason is is pretty right where you're just he's not a wanted player that doesn't mean things can't bounce directly in Sony's direction like, like he could turn into the featured back of at least on the, the one and two down work they might have a really strong offensive line and a strong running game it could happen when Bill Belichick is the coach of your team but I I have honestly I have no idea no idea where Sony Michelle's ADP should end up or will end up but could he be in the fourth round oh he I can see that happening well I can see him going in the eighth round like he yeah. could, he is he is a mystery box if you've ever had one. It'll be yeah. It'll it's be not. Go ahead, Jay. It'll be fun when we when it comes time. I have not got yet to the New England Patriots while, while I'm going team by team through my stat breakdown, and I start that process by researching the teams and reading some uh, recent articles and you know, beat reporters and all that. But I, I don't want to divide up this offense. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? It's like. Uh, you, you assume Stidham is not going to be great. And so there's, you know, a defense, low scoring plan to win. Um, yikes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm not going to be an optimist with a lot of my projections on that, uh, on that roster. I'm, I'm willing to be wrong in the, in the case that somehow it goes the other direction, but I'm not going to be, I, I can't be an optimist about them producing a lot of fantasy valuable players. Let's talk news. 
news and notes from around the league. All right. The Cowboys have signed quarterback Andy Dalton, formerly of the Bengals. I think he already has a house in Dallas, so this was convenient for him. One-year contract to be the backup for the Cowboys. Three million guaranteed. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's a phenomenal uh, yeah. move by the Cowboys. I mean, backup quarterbacks still matter in this league. If Dak were to go down, you could compete. And, you know, you, I think sometimes people don't realize the, the benefit of the backup quarterback to the to the practice and, to you know, to, to your defense when you're going against, you know, the – uh, the scout team and things like that. So it's a good deal for Dalton. And I like the fact that he took a backup deal. It wasn't like, I have to be a starter. I'm the best. Cause it's like, no, yeah, this is where, this is where I belong now. Position yourself to be in the market next year with the one year deal. Cause yep. year to year, more opportunities pop up. But uh, for those speculating Dalton to new England did not happen. All right. Jacksonville. Quite a bit happened with Jacksonville. They they declined Leonard Fournette's uh, fifth year option, meaning that this is the last year that Fournette's under contract. There were already the trade rumors. It seems pretty apparent that Fournette is not long for Jacksonville, though you might get one other nice year out of him. But they Maybe. also signed running back Chris Thompson, formerly of the Redskins. Um yeah, maybe you say that, Mike, because they could just cut Fournette before the season and literally not even have him be a part of this offense. I, and I think that the Chris Thompson signing is actually – it matters. Like, this is this is Jay Gruden running this offense. Jay Gruden and Chris Thompson are are tied very close together. Like, if you can go back and see all the uh, – like, I was reminded of the video. Mm -hmm. When Jay Gruden was fired, Chris Thompson broke down because in the locker room because – Gruden was the one who supported him through all of the injuries because he Gruden believed in the talent and the player and the man that Chris Thompson is. Chris Thompson is a sensational pass catching back. That like part of Leonard Fournette's appeal last year was they had no one else to play running back. And so he just absorbed this huge target share. And now they have someone who can actually help the team with with that target share. So I don't I've I've uh, projected for. I already did the the Jaguars, and I I think I took Fournette's passing work like in half because I'm I don't expect anything close to what he received last year because Chris Thompson is there. Yeah, there was no other option last year. Last year, if you wanted to throw to the running back, that meant it was always Fournette. It was ah ah crap. Fournette's still on the field. So now, All right, now you're gonna take said, the ball. To be clear, Chris, that's a lot better than ah crap, Kalen Balage situation oh yeah, yeah yeah no 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 doubt <laughs> i didn't say he was the worst in the league sure sure yeah he 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 got the job done but he's not as talented as chris thompson in that role so i agree chris thompson will come in eat into leonard fournette's role this season for however it, for, i was gonna say three, yeah, four games. the injury it's a real it's a real thing for chris thompson yeah i'm not expecting uh him to stay around for all 16 this year they would need to add another significant running back piece to let fournette go because agreed if, yes because even if uh you know jay gruden loves chris thompson that means he's he's aware of the risks of chris thompson but it's uh, a it's a big signing and like you said you you no longer are in the position to just project the default same leonard fournette from last year after all of these transactions yeah i agree i i do think right now their plan is to just run him into the ground though as opposed to cutting him and finding a different back and swapping him out with who who, who devon freeman you know it's like yeah they said I, they couldn't even get a seventh rounder for him. Oh, oh my man. goodness! Well, I don't know. I don't know if that was true or false, but that's. I read that they couldn't even find a seventh round taker for him. <laughs> so, man, the stuff in the streets. Yeah. So I mean, you don't. Why? Why bring a guy in? I guess that. You know, there was some talk about Seattle for Leonard Fournette. That seemed like it made made a ton of sense, but didn't happen yet. Mm. At least. Um, Quite a few players had their fifth-year options decline. Mitch Trubisky, Corey Davis, John Ross. <laughs> did it Jason, all did I see sense. Jason visually perk up when you said Trubisky's fifth year was declined? I mean, I was shocked <laughs> when it was declined. Not because it's – yeah. I mean, his option should have been declined. He's not, he's not a very good quarterback. And to you know pay him good first-round money is, is, is tough. 
but I still expected them to do that because they're so pot committed to him and, you know, from trading up and selecting him over Mahomes and everyone else. This news to me gives me so much more uh, belief in the competition between him and Nick Foles that you know, I projected I, Nick Foles. I did not project Mr. Trubisky. Did you right go now. all in? I, I went, I all, I went all, all in on Nick Foles. Okay. I, I split as well. I gave each one eight games and I have done the Bears. Yeah, yeah. So um, there were a number of players whose fifth-year options were exercised. Mike Williams, Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, O.J. Howard and Evan Ingram, and David Njoku. All three of those players, <laughs> those three <laughs> tight three ends. players who were supposed to be traded or like, off of the team that they currently are on. Like, no, no, we're, we're going to keep them. Also, we're going to keep them next year. Yeah. What? Yeah. what? That's weird. <laughs> they should just go... Like Tampa should send OJ Howard to the Giants. The Giants should send Ingram to Cleveland. Yes. Cleveland should send Injoku to Tampa Bay. Yes. And they should just try him in a new spot. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That, that Maybe it'll work out. Everybody wins. You're all getting a t you're all getting a really talented tight end who might actually do it since the other really talented tight end didn't. <laughs> right. I love that idea, Andy. Right. Maybe different you know. Different spot. Uh, two other bits of, of kind of speculative news we can talk about briefly before we jump into uh, the dynasty differences. A at least according to the Chiefs general manager, um, Damian Williams will remain the starter. Clyde Edwards-Alaire will compete for playing time. Does Do these comments matter? Does this change anything that you already had envisioned in your head? This is 100% what I expected them to do. So it, it doesn't change. it, And I have projected Kansas City and Clyde Edwards came out uh, a lot higher than I thought he was going to project uh, because... Let me I guess, that he, was the first team you did and the first player you did on your projections <laughs> be, because you were very excited to stat seven, out Clyde Edwards. Oh, I, I, as, as excited <laughs> as I have been, I've been trying to I, at least pump the brakes a little bit when I'm talking about redraft. He's he was still easily my dynasty 101 in rookie drafts, but I felt like Kansas City would give Damian Williams the starting job and it wouldn't just right away be Alaire. But I do believe that Edwards Alaire will take over the starting job sooner than later. <laughs> I just see Damian Williams' situation where they are protecting the ego. You contributed to a championship, but you know, Hold this clipboard, Damien. I promise this is more important than you actually being out there on the field. This is the lead back, back job right here. Hold this thing. <laughs> um, it might take some time. We've said that on the show. It might take a little bit of time for the volume to increase for uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but if you believe in the talent, I know, you know, I do. I do, yeah. And, and, also and it represents something different than what Damien Williams brings to the table. So they can be very complimentary. Damien could end up being you know, relevant for fantasy for a time. And to be factored in here, what what we still don't know about the NFL, what does the offseason look like? What does training camp look like for these teams? If, like, is it, do, do we get into July and it's just all systems go? Right. Then then Edwards Allaire has a, a opportunity to establish himself. It, if it has to be modified, then... These incumbents are are going to have a much easier time holding onto their starting role, at least for the first like twenty five percent of the season or so. That could end up being the case in a lot of battles, a lot of situations yeah. that you know might take weeks into the season that could have been figured out in open training camp and preseason games that we might not get to see. That'll be something to monitor and watch those situations for sure. Yeah, and then. This is interesting to me. Frank Reich came out, says he envisioned second round Jonathan Taylor and Marlon Mack to serve as a one-two punch. This is not Marlon Mack will remain the starter, but Jonathan Taylor right. will, quote, compete for playing time. That's fair. So having those stories back to back, you know, if you believe in the talent of Jonathan Taylor, it's the same story as believing in the talent for Clyde edwards alaire and that the future is with Taylor. Mack is part of the present only. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think both of these situations, you would you have this hope that they're going to come out and say, you know what, we didn't draft him for no reason. We're going to ride, you know, our 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 new guy. But that rarely happens. Usually, you want to talk up the the vet, and um, you know, I I think both players will be limited by their 
backups, that being Mac and uh, Damian Williams, uh, in year one. And but they are the future, and I think these head coaches are aware of that and will, as the season goes on, make them the centerpiece of that position. Yeah, it's going to be pretty pretty interesting to see how those two play out. All right, before we get into Dynasty Differences, I want to thank today's sponsors. We're talking about Omaha Steaks. If you're staying home, which uh, a lot of us are doing right now, there's never been a better time to stock up on Omaha Steaks. You've heard us talk about it. I promise you, you will uh, you will not be disappointed. They deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of family favorites without leaving your home. And their stock up boxes make a beautiful, wonderful, delicious care package for friends, family. Make sure someone that you love has a full freezer of meat. And Jason, mm-hmm. Mike, and I still need to send you. Oh yeah, a box. <laughs> um, neither of us have taken up the mantle. <laughs> oh, so you'll get it. We'll yeah, we'll probably have to have our own bet on, the, and then whoever loses has to be the one to actually send you the box. That's probably what's going to happen. But uh, Brooks, stay on top of them, will yeah, you? Yeah, Brooks, I mean, could you, you just know. order the box for us and bill <laughs> us? Thank you. Uh, Omaha Steaks delivers guaranteed quality and safety with each and every order. And right now, the Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sales available for listeners of our show. To stock up on the food you love, go to omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar, and you can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. These perfect, perfect meat packages. That's what I'm calling them, a perfect meat package. Mm. For families, uh, they're ready to head straight for your door with free shipping. That's omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar. And we want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. Just because you're staying at home doesn't mean that you uh, have a free pass to not take care of yourself. Look, we've all had the afternoon and realized, ah, crap, I haven't brushed my teeth. I haven't showered. You need to take care of yourself. And Manscaped is helping you do that. It is the best body hair trimmer on the market. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit. It comes with their new and improved Lawnmower 3.0. It's waterproof. It's cordless. It's a body trimmer. And they got... Tons of other liquid formulations to help you round out your manscaping routine. I've got the Lawnmower 3.0. I'm making sure that I'm I'm keeping on top of things. And look, you just feel better as a human being when you are actually caring for yourself. And trust me, the Manscaped is the best way to do it. They have a nick-free. They they have advanced skin-safe technology. They're making sure that there's no nicks in places where there should not be. And you could and you could subscribe to the perfect package and get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. And you're going to get a travel bag and a and high performance boxer briefs as well. You got to check it out. You can get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code Footballers at Manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off with free shipping manscaped.com use code footballers thanks manscaped what's the difference between me and you me and you what's the difference jason yeah Uh, about five bank accounts (laughs) (laughs) before we jump into dynasty differences i will check in with our uh, newly minted 38 year old friend Jason Moore. Oh, uh, you yes. are, you've passed the date that you said and claimed, um, you know, what yeah, May, you, May 3rd was the deadline for yeah. some food decisions. <laughs> well, you know, leading up to my birthday was all about putting on mass and <laughs> Foot Clan success. Um, now, uh, starting May 3rd and, and onward. Uh, you know, may the fourth be with you, Cinco de Mayo, and hopefully beyond three days. Uh, is healthy eating and healthy living, getting some oh, exercise. Oh, he's back. Getting You're up and at him. Part three. Uh, I'm I'm going. Uh, yes, yes. This is definitely <laughs> going to be the year of health. Um, I'm doing at least ten laps in the pool. You know, doing a little bit of workouts. So, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Let's let's go. Let's get a little healthy. A, a little, little healthy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's get a little That's healthy. That's what they say. Get a little That's healthy. That's what you want. Toes Just deep. To, yeah. Toes <laughs> deep. I'm gonna dip my toes in that healthy water. Oh my goodness! All right, we're taking a look at the big biggest differences between the three of us in dynasty startup rankings. We're gonna walk through a number of players. Um, I don't know how long we'll talk about each guy, but 
we'll see where the conversation takes us. We'll start with Ryan Tannehill, quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, just signed to a four-year, $118 million deal. Right now, in uh, the consensus ranking in Dynasty is the 16th quarterback. Mike and Jason both have him at uh, 15 range, and I've got him at 23. So that is uh, a significant difference. Last year, we know the story. It was pretty magical. Um, you know, he started week seven through 17 in Tennessee. It was a uh, Nick Foles esque type of season. That's what it reminds sure. me of that Philadelphia That's fair. year. High touchdown totals, extremely low interception totals. Um, I've taken a posture and position with Ryan Tannehill in dynasty leagues where he, he has not earned it for me. And so I think that's why the gap is there. A span of games uh, last year, 10 games, unsustainable efficiency numbers. I've simply made the decision that I've seen enough of Ryan Tannehill over the preceding seven years that I'm not. I'm not willing to let those 10 games move him forward. It's not worth the risk to me. That's why I have him lower mm. than both of you guys do. I I've, I don't think that he can continue to do what he did at the end of last year. I don't think we've seen a lot of players do that. Um, it was a magical run, but the numbers are going to come down for him. And we've talked a lot about Tennessee in general, so I guess I'd be curious as to whether you're granting him that level of success with that ranking or whether you're just... Or, or that's your version of a tempered um, ranking? Because that's what it seems like to me. 14, 15, that's not giving him, that's not anointing him by any stretch. No, for me, it's like, I believe in Ryan Tannehill, the player. I honestly believe we were back, you have to remember when it happened, but back to uh, 2014, 2015, like, we were seeing Ryan Tannehill turn into a a very solid quarterback, over four thousand yards, both of those, uh, both of those seasons, twenty-seven touchdowns, twenty-four touchdowns. Had it was getting it done on the ground as well. Like he was on his way to becoming a franchise type of a quarterback, and then he ran into a giant black hole that sucks all the value and talent away from his players. This is just what we have seen from head coach Adam Gaze. When players escape his gravitational pull, like Devontae Parker, like Kenyon Drake, these guys turn into better players. It's a it's a bizarre phenomenon, but it's it's hard to It's like opposite coaching. <laughs> it's it's hard to explain <laughs> away why these players who were bust just keep getting better when they escape from a particular coach. And no, I I don't believe that he's gonna throw a, a touchdown on every like eight six and a uh, half or seven seven point seven that was his touchdown percent that's not going to happen but he will be the started quarterback he's surrounded by talent he's surrounded by one of the up-and-coming receivers in the game of aj brown so i still believe in him and i believe he'll be a starting quarterback for at least three years which is not something you can project upon many players in the league. Yeah, I think it's, uh, for, for my ranking, you're, you're talking about guys in that next tier after him that, you know, maybe you're taking a shot on um, s someone that's young and has more draft capital and, you know, Sam Darnold. You think he has a better, brighter ca career ahead. To Who's me, currently attached to the B-hole. Right, right, exactly. Right <laughs> um, he's, so, he's past the event horizon. You know, you've either got... <laughs> Remind uh, me never to say it like that again, <laughs> by the way. That was not. I'm. <laughs> He's passed. Yeah. Um. So oh. you know, I I think you know Drew Locke. He's he's young. So you're either you're either going um, correct young right, upside hopeful or what you know is a solid usable fantasy asset in Tannehill who just signed you know four year 118 million dollar contract. So that gives you uh, you know they don't really have an out for the next three years. So that's kind of the window I I live in dynasty. Is like if I can have a great three year window, um, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. And whether Derrick Henry is back next year, that will matter. Interesting stat on Tannehill: the second highest sack rate in the league. Hmm. Only Dwayne it's, Haskins it, managed to be sacked more often than Ryan Tannehill. Kind of interesting. Wow. Even where, where's Kyler on that list? I do not know. I do not have the list a lot in front of, of me. Sacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. Oh, yeah. well, there's Let's a talk theme. About another. Are these all player? Is this a 
Adam Gase. <laughs> That's right. Centered episode. Devontae Parker next. Need a show title that I probably would not be <laughs> the best. All right. <laughs> Things to not be attached Wait, to. Wait, is what's the difference between me and you? Like, you have Adam Gaze and <laughs> I don't? A, it's a trick question. <laughs> oh, man. Kenyon Drake, consensus number 15 in Dynasty running back rankings. Uh, did we only pick out differences between me and you two? <laughs> is that what happened? Uh, yes, that's I right. I didn't pick them out. Uh, you guys Mike both have them at 13. Yep, got them up at 13. You're down at 21. Um, you know, th- this has a lot of similarities to it. To really Ryan does. Tannehill. It you, does. You've got um a one small year, window of of dominance. Right. Exactly. It, but it was dominant, and um versus he hasn't done it. You've seen a lot of his career before, so I, I assume you are taking the approach of uh, you know the identical uh, train of thought where he, he has to prove it first. But it's hard to have a twenty six year old running back have a lot of time to prove it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm. As part of the approach, part of it is long-term uh, destination. Is he in Arizona beyond this year? Yep. He's a player that I projected for a very solid season. Um, just about a thousand yards, eight touchdowns, four hundred twenty through the air. Tannehill and Drake for this year, I think, have I mean every reason to have success. It's a matter of looking to me long-term, and and I couldn't move him up as far, not knowing where his kind of long-term destination will be whether he'll get paid whether he'll be back in arizona i do think arizona will use chase edmonds quite a bit this year um but drake should have a great deal of success he'll, he'll be ranked very very high in redraft leagues for me i mean i have him higher than Gurley, singletary montgomery so i think it's a great it's just a matter of the dynasty aspect and what you believe long term yeah, well, and I, I'm just I'm taking the bet like that. That's what so much of Dynasty is just which side of the bet do you want to accept? And I'll take the bet that Arizona and Kenyon Drake work out a a deal to keep him here for a couple years because he's on the transition tag. He'll only be here for the one year, but they made they made things happen to make sure that Kenyon Drake could be the starting running back. It took uh, it took an assistant GM or Arizona's assistant GM, uh, Bill O'Brien, to to get the deal completely done. <laughs> but they made a, they, they found a way to get it done. So I, I'm betting the Cardinals will figure out how to get Drake here for at least a couple years. Wouldn't that and, be the ultimate troll if Arizona sent like a payroll stub? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> just, send him a, just send him a check. Or have our HR department here in Arizona <laughs> call up and say, you know, oh, some paper, we have some paperwork for you to fill out. Need a W-2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah it, it's interesting so i'm uh i'm i'm with mike i fully exp- i i expect that they will actually sign him to a longer term deal this year well, he'll, right be 27, signed, he'll be 27 right but by the time he has to sign a deal uh uh he could he could be i think they will work <laughs> out well i think they'll work it out before he turns 27 this year he, before the uh before he hits the market because they could still negotiate while he's on the french uh on the transition tag they could still negotiate a long-term uh, deal and replace the transition tech. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think that that is likely to happen. But it's interesting because the next guy that we're talking about, Austin Eckler, has a lot of similarities, and yet I'm I'm down on him. Right, the the one year, not a lot of tread on the tire. Right, you might be uh 25, 26 years old, which you know is starting shockingly to become older for a running back. But neither one of these guys has a lot of work on their tires. They both just got paid uh to be quality backs, you know, the presumed starter this next year after dominating for fantasy. But I believe that what you saw in Drake and his usage last year is, you know, everything that the that the Cardinals have done says that's what we want more of. Whereas, you know, with uh, the Chargers and Eckler, they signed him, but they're changing the quarterback. I don't believe that he will be as good for fantasy without the pass catching work. And I don't think the pass catching work is going to be there with Tyrod Taylor as much. Oh. So th- that's why I'm low. I- I'm, I've got Austin Eckler at 22. Mike, you've got him at uh, as RB 12, yeah. Andy as RB 15. So tell me why I'm wrong on, on Eckler. Yeah. I mean, I just don't think that I think he will be heavily involved in the, the pass catching work. Eckler is the kind of player in fantasy where you never quite know why he always finishes every single week <laughs> where he does. It takes very few touches. 
for a player like Austin Eckler. So a four-year, $24 million contract for me, I'm not worried about, not not wildly worried about the Rivers leaving and then Tyrod for a couple games and maybe Herbert comes in. The game plan is going to be to get the ball to Austin Eckler. So they yeah. still play the same amount of minutes no matter what quarterback's out there. So I have more confidence that at this point in time, I'm just buying into the fact that Eckler is productive in fantasy and – um, this team wasn't good. They drafted where they drafted for a reason. So they weren't a very good team last year, yet Eckler was still very valuable, and they didn't do anything in the draft that pushed me away from Eckler and Dynasty. Uh, he is not prototypical for a running back. He is not what you – it's a lot more comfortable for me when I slot in a running back one or a running back two when I know that they have you know, 15, 16 carries coming and will be used on third down, and I can just project it that way. But I don't know. I feel like I've learned my lesson with Eckler. And it don't don't forget those first four weeks. Austin Eckler was averaging fourteen carries a game. Like they weren't afraid to have him be the full time without the, Melvin the, Gordon there. Yeah, yeah, without they they made him the full time three down guy. Like Justin Jackson was in there getting a handful of touches uh, during that time period, but Austin Eckler was the dude. And uh, Josh Kelly, maybe. Uh, he was a Jackson fourth. is more of a threat. Uh, yeah, it's it's to be debated because because Kelly out of UCLA is the more prototypical. He's the guy you were talking about, Andy. Like he's the bigger guy that maybe he comes in and takes Melvin that Melvin Gordon role. But he was a fourth round pick. We've seen the hit rate for players drafted in the fourth round and later. I'm all in on Austin Eckler. That the talent is proven. The money is there. The the pass catching ability is there. He he checks every single box except for maybe he's about ten pounds lighter than we really want him to be. All right, uh, let's talk about. Oh, by the way, dynasty question: Would you rather have Eckler or the one hundred and four in rookie drafts? Ooh, so put this to the test. Uh, I would rather have the one hundred and four. I would rather have Austin Eckler because the one hundred and four is going to be what acres. It could be Acres, if, if Dobbins, Dobbins, Judy, CD Lamb. All those guys would be uh, in in the you know. I'll take sh- I'll take Eckler over the one. I'll take Eckler. And you said, Jason, you take the one hundred four. I would take the one hundred four. It's just a matter of yeah, the, it's, the, it's, just believing that thirty or forty targets are going away for Austin Eckler, and I think that <laughs> when that happens, if if he loses thirty targets, he will still have seventy eight targets. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's a huge deal since, you know, 900 of his plus of his yards came through the air. I mean, you lose 30 targets, you're not, you know, you're an RB2. Sure, but okay. he loses 30 targets, but he could also gain 70 carries. So, you know, you look back when Tyrod had LaShawn McCoy in his prime, you know, right. great pass catching back paid the money, was on the field a whole lot more than Austin Eckler was going to be. He was getting 57 targets. You know, from uh, from Tyrod, so uh, yeah, it's a, also a very different coaching staff. Yeah, who didn't who didn't just pay Austin Eckler a whole bunch of money? Um, you guys want to move on? Yeah. You guys want you want keep keep Eckling each other? <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> I am not going to talk about Julio Jones because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like my ranking. <laughs> Uh, what's funny is yours is is probably a bit too low. Mine a is probably a bit too high. Like Jason, Jason is the baby yeah. bear right here. Yeah, you, you've got the. Uh, no, we're not going to talk about this because I have I have Julio too low, and I think that's what the difference that stepped out here. Mike has him at wide receiver seven, Jason fourteen. Right now in dynasty, I have him at twenty, and I don't like that. I mean, we know that that you're not going to get a five year run of Julio Jones, but right in dynasty, you know, we've talked so much about the value of you know, that balance, the age versus current production, the guaranteed production that you will get from Julio Jones. And you look at this year and the vacated targets and Julio's entire career and the just, I mean, is there anybody in the league you'd bet for 14, you know, bet your house for 1400 yards on than Julio Jones? Yeah, that's, that's a very fair point. So, uh, I think I'm just a little bit too low. I need to, I need to modify him. I, I'm not quite sure why he ended up kind of in that zone because that would put him basically behind making decisions on the rookie. So you would both 
go Julio Jones right now versus any long term play in a guy like Judy or I Lamb, would, yeah. right? Yeah, I would. I mean, you've got a guy here who it has a fully legitimate shot of being the number one wide receiver in fantasy this year, helping you win a championship. You can't just ignore that for potential. It's tough because when you get these older guys, 31 years old, you start saying, oh, I got I to gotta lower them in my ranks. I shouldn't take them. I, I, how much time do I have left? But there are special guys out there. You know, if if when Larry Fitzgerald turned 30 or 31, you were like, oh, he's done. I'm out. I got to get rid of him. You missed still – a lot of years of so, unbelievable production. Let me ask you this thing, because I do have. A, we can stay and talk about Julio, because I have a better question, and that is for dynasty purposes. And I've been through Atlanta and my statting of of Calvin Ridley. If you're in a dynasty startup, are you drafting Julio Jones over Calvin Ridley, based on Oof. what you believe about that um, the ca- career trajectory there? Calvin Ridley's 25 years old. Julio Jones is uh, 31 years old, and to me, Calvin Ridley stands out as this year's Chris Godwin candidate. I mean, Austin Hooper is gone. Ridley's going to be out there so much. I projected him for a, a good increase in targets. I think you guys did the same. Mm-hmm. So do you bank on this being the breakout year in a dynasty draft and make the Ridley selection? I'm, so it's it's tough, right? Because Usually in a startup draft, my team isn't necessarily a championship worthy guy because I'm I'm a little weak at running back. So I could see myself taking Ridley over Jones, um, just because I'm uh, you know I'm kind of on on the draft day building for the start. I've got them four spots within each other in my dynasty rankings. I do have Julio higher, but in general, you know I like my team right now in our dynasty league. I've got Julio. I'm back to back champ. So I'm I, my team could compete. I would not trade Julio for Calvin Ridley right now. You know what I mean? Because if you're in it, I still want the upside of being able to go out and win, which is more so with Julio Jones. I'll still take Julio. Okay. All right. But it, it's a it's a fair discussion. It's how well, okay. do you well, who play would you the take? game? You, you take Godwin or Evans right now in a dynasty startup. Yeah, I mean, Godwin. I think I think Godwin's going there. So that that was that transitional year where. Last year, if you had made that hypothesis for yeah, if you made the start, bet, you won. You, you would have been crazy to say Godwin over over Evans last year, um, at least by consensus. So, sure. Uh, if you have confidence in Calvin Ridley's talent and you want to gamble, this would be the year you might get that value on him. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's look at Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson's 26 years old. I have him at 21, Jason at 16, Mike at 12. You're the most bullish, Mike. Tell me why. Uh, it's the the talents of him, the, the age. He's not even twenty seven years old. for For an elite wide receiver, uh, he's at the point where he could just be peaking and still have you know multiple years of elite play. It's is this his final year in Chicago? I believe this is the final year of his contract. Yeah, so the, he can okay. f- he can finish off with with this might be the best quarterback he's ever played with and. <laughs> if Nick Foles is the starting quarterback for Chicago, that's not saying a lot, but we've seen what Allen Robinson can do when when he's stuck in a bad situation because he's been in a bad situation his entire career. And I, I believe that Allen Robinson will get one more mega contract. He won't be trying to sign that contract after tearing his ACL. Well, yeah, theoretically, but because because last time, <laughs> I, I don't watch that. Please, Alan, stay Are you healthy. trying to not jinx him there? Yeah, but he he tore his ACL on that first reception of the season, and that was his contract year. Then he had to go find a new team. So if he enters free agency healthy, he's going to get a monster contract, and he will have far more suitors than having to settle for going to the Chicago Bears of uh, who weren't. Like a high flying offense, he could he could pick a much much better situation. So long term, I'm bullish on Allen Robinson this year. He's still the featured target for either Mitch Trubisky or Nick Foles. So I'm I'm in on him this year, and I'm in on him moving forward. He had a uh, 154 targets this past year, I believe. He he put up 100. He had 151 targets in 2015 and 2016. Had 154 this year. I don't know if you guys have gotten through your uh, Bears projections. I told you I did fulls, but um, I projected 
more efficiency, lower targets for Robinson this year. Is that where you would be if Foles was a starter? Yeah, that that's how that's how I have him. I've got him with 140 targets, so going down a little bit. Um, you know, I I see him as a really really good wide receiver too with this Bears team, and then I love the fact that he's young and that he could sign somewhere else. But a lot of the, we bring this up every year. These wide receivers that change teams is not always good for them. You know, I realize it's good to get away from a poor quarterback play and go to better quarterback play. But if he signs somewhere where there's another you know, alpha on the other side of the field. Now, do you say, I, well, I wish I had my 154 targets with the bears again, right. versus these 125 targets at the new destination. So I, you know, I, th I think he's a really, really good wide receiver too, but I can't put him into that wide receiver one category personally. Do you have Calvin Ridley or Allen Robinson higher in your dynasty startups, Mike Robinson? Okay. All right. That would be a, that'd be a tough call for me. Let's look at, uh, one more wide receiver here, Robert Woods, 28 years old, consensus 27 uh, in our rankings. Mike at 22, Jason at 26. I'm down at 34 on Robert Woods. He's tough, man. He really he's, is. He's a very tough guy to to rank because he's been awesome. He has been the man for for the Rams now for years. The, the changing of the offensive scheme – the, at the end of last year, does that stick moving forward? They signed or they drafted Van Jefferson in the second round, and they drafted him. Uh, the when they were talking about Jefferson after the draft, they liked him that he could fill in every single role. They they felt that he reminded the the team of Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Is that is that good long term for Robert Woods? If you're drafting a player who reminds you of Robert Woods, like I I'm not exactly sure if that's Good or bad news. What I, we know is that Woods has been very productive. He will be great for fantasy next year. But 28, coming to the end of the contract, uh, I I might be a bit too high on Robert Woods. Uh, how are you feeling about him, Jay? I mean, I, I, I still really like Robert Woods for what he is, which is a solid, reliable Both of you guys uh, should come star. trade for him. Uh, I've got him in our league of record if you want to come get him at more your value than where I have them. That would be helpful. Uh, I will go get him for where you have them. So if you want to work a deal <laughs> and you don't believe in him, I, I, we can work something out. But, uh, you know, he's he, he's an affordable wide receiver for their team. He's still under contract through 2021. He's been their target lead for the last several years, either on a per-game basis or at the end of the season if he played 16. Um, he's with a good head coach, you know, I, and he's a solid – Solid wide receiver has been, you know, pretty much his whole career very undervalued because he's not a high flying superstar type of player. But I, I've always enjoyed the value for fantasy of of Robert Woods outside of the first few weeks of last year. Yeah, I think this year is going to be good for Robert Woods. I think beyond that, it'll be very interesting because the Rams can be a little bit of a cursory tale of what Tennessee Titan fans could be facing. Not that things are going to be terrible, but that things are generally going to change. The NFL, it adjusts. It's adjusted to the Rams. Uh, I know that we lay a lot of that at the feet of the offensive line. Well, it's not just at the feet of the offensive line. Um, teams have made adjustments. I think Robert Woods, you've seen his career arc, right? He's always been the same good player, Jason. We talked years ago before he came to Los Angeles how talented we believed he was in Buffalo and didn't have the opportunity but if you take away the Sean McVay effect over the next couple of years, which maybe you do, maybe you don't, that, that would be my concern with the age getting up there and then the offense shifting in some capacity. Again, this year, I think he's going to be a very good uh, player. But looking long term, I have Cooper Cup a lot higher than him in Dynasty Leagues, which I think we all do um, just due to the age factor. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he's the touchdown guy. Cooper Cup has been. Um, and then the age, uh, the contract situation, who you expect to get re-signed long-term. You know, when you're talking dynasty, I, I, I do have cup higher. All right. Before we jump into some mailbag, I, w I have one more player, a tight end. His name is Rob Gronkowski. Maybe you've heard of him. <laughs> I, I think players like this are hilarious to talk about for dynasty startup purposes because they need to be drafted. We all know that, you know, Gronkowski may, it could be one year in Tampa, um, could be two. Probably will expire with wherever Brady is at at the you know in the best case. 
but what do you what do you do with a player like Rob Gronkowski? The short term value, but at a very hard to find position. Tight end is a, a sure. place that to get production, it's hard. And you you have situations in Dynasty where Vance McDonald looked like a pick that you could make last year and now he has completely <laughs> expired yes. seemingly for fantasy for dynasty purposes so um burden the hand at tight end is worth a lot in dynasty leagues is it not uh it, it is it, it absolutely is valuable especially if you're making a run so this is a very team dependent situation but more often than not if i had gronk and i could have flipped him immediately for a second round rookie pick i would take that probably 99% of the time there's a can Gronk actually be Gronk again after taking the year off losing all that weight maybe that helps I tend to side that it won't and the last time we saw Gronk it was a very very disappointing season like he's going to be is he about to be 31 very soon I don't think that Gronk is in the league for very long. I view him as a one, maybe two year player. You have the 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 situation of Bruce Arians tight end offensive philosophy, which remains undefeated at, at this point. Uh, so I'm I'm not banking on Gronk. And I would if I was one of the players, if I grabbed him off of the, the waiver wire for Fab, I would have been trying to trade him immediately. Yeah, I, I I definitely think you got a two year window here. He, uh, like Andy said, he's tied to Tom Brady. If Tom Brady retires two years from now, even if Gronk's got juice in the tank, then he'll he'll leave. He's not playing for someone else. And I I don't worry too much. I I think the time off helps his body. He was dealing with injuries, but he's thirty years old. You know, Travis Kelsey's thirty years old. Uh, Zach Ertz is almost thirty. You've seen players the the you know really great players. Uh, you know, Jared Jared Cook is thirty three years old. Um, doesn't Greg Gronk Olson just feel I think older than thirty? Though he does because a couple of years ago he was dealing with injuries. So his it's injuries, just a matter of yeah. It's just a matter of is his body healed now, or I think was you, his I, body not able to do it? I think you have him too low, Mike. I don't think when push comes to shove, you would be taking. I think you'd be taking Gronk. <laughs> I don't think you take. No, wait, I don't think you're, you're taking Kyle Rudolph in a dynasty league over Rob Gronkowski. All right, let's throw some names out here. For I don't you. think you're yeah. taking Will Disley. All in right. Dynasty League who over Rob you, Gronkowski. Who would you take, Jack Doyle or Gronk? Gronk. I'll take Doyle. Okay. Uh, you do have Doyle ranked higher. They are both 30 years old. Um, who would you take, David Njoku Gronk. or Gronk? <laughs> Gronk. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> Backup tight end, but 23-year-old yeah. amazing I, specimen. Or I suppose that it one would be Gronk, I suppose, because at this point you can't. It's hard to see a world where David and Joku actually breaks out and becomes his, the first round draft pick that he was. This is this is why dynasty startup rankings, though, still need to be filtered through your own league situation and your team's roster. Because if if Mike has a team that he's going to compete for a title this year, then you're looking at Gronk differently than you would if you were building, you know, long term. Am I wrong in that? Because no, you're 100 percent right. Jay Sternberger it, it, not, is a yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. That exactly. you don't, you know, you're not going to go after Jay Sternberger for or Ozzy Ozzy in, right in New England. I mean, but yeah, I mean, if you're rebuilding or you know your your window looks to be a year or two out, then I would rather have Jay Sternberger than 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 Gronk. Dynasty is so weird that way. Yeah. So uh, let's do some mailbag. 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 <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> You sustained it a little bit longer than I thought, and I appreciated. It's a little Mike. more, a little more sultry. Yeah, I, you know, it's Which early. Which is in the always morning. appreciated. I got these two guys up to record a little bit earlier than normal, uh, mind you. Still about an hour later than when we record during the season, but it's been a rough adjustment for both of these gentlemen. This that morning. life doesn't exist anymore, man. Yeah. The in season life. <laughs> well, the the school life. Like I know that's I know. the difference. The difference for everything is I have to wake up early for school i you need your own training camp to get into in-season mode yes i will need a training camp (laughs) i am not a natural (laughs) early morning riser Uh, like andy you could you'll you'll wake up without an alarm at what six yeah 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 
Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah, not happening. <laughs> I took a walk at 5.45 in the morning yesterday, and I didn't wake myself up. I just opened my eyes, and it was 5.45. Yeah, nope. It, it's it's completely manufactured for me to wake up at <laughs> six in the morning. Yes. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple mailbag questions here. If you have a, a question for us, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a, be- uh, submit a question <laughs> button or dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Uh, let's go here. Rookie draft question. The 102 Justin in South Carolina says, yo, ballers. Yo. I, I have the 102 in my dynasty draft and I need a running back. I have Henderson already, mm. so wondering if I should go with Cam Akers there, or is there another guy I should take instead? Well, that's, that is tough. That's really interesting because you know I I clearly have Jonathan Taylor a, a tier above Cam Akers, but Cam Akers would you know is still a is still a good shot, and and obviously if you could have the guy that fills Todd Gurley's role. That's very valuable. I think the danger here is that Todd Gurley's role could be never coming by back. Both Cam Akers and Henderson, and now you've got the backfield split. So I don't think it's a I don't think it's as safe a move as you think. If you take Cam Akers over a Jonathan Taylor, personally, I would take Jonathan Taylor. However, if you are saying I I I believe one of these guys is going to get that role. Uh, Cam Akers, you know, and then you'd have the handcuff already and you want to do that, then trade down, Tra- you know, go to whoever's got number three, because most, most people, certainly not everybody, but you, most yeah, people you would out have there to. have a top two, like they've got uh, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire and Jonathan Taylor as, as your top two. And if you've got someone who sees it that way, then they'll, they'll trade a decent amount That's- just to go from three to two. You know, for the early morning advice, Jason, all of that was spot on. That's exactly how I see the situation. I, you can't take Cam Akers there. You can't bank on Gurley Spot coming back. You could be in a really uncomfortable position for years trying to decide who to start, and neither one will ever earn the the role that you think that they could. And so, I I agree with one hundred percent of what you said. Yeah, you're you're cutting you're you're cutting down your ceiling if you don't take Taylor there. Um. Yeah, and and who knows? I mean, you take Taylor there, maybe you got two players. That's still. Maybe yeah. That's Henderson exactly what I'm that saying. Spot. Yeah. By the ceiling is, Henderson. Maybe Henderson's the starting running back, and now you have both starting running backs. All right, we'll close it out with this one. This has been a super common question I've seen on Twitter come through to uh, to me. Superflex one on one. What do you do? <laughs> do you take Clyde <laughs> Edwards Hilaire or do you take Joe Burrow? Uh, Marcus in New York says he has the one on one and a superflex. Wants to know Burrow or Clyde edwards alaire has Breeze and Minshew at okay. quarterback, Zeke and Henry at running back. What do you do in his situation, and is there a universal answer or this is not? this is great context because I don't think there is a universal answer. To me, I would take Clyde edwards alaire over uh, Joe Burrow. All things equal, um, but all things aren't always equal. Whoever has the one on one probably has a roster already and this is perfect if my quarterbacks were breeze and Minshew, Minshew is not guaranteed to be a long-term starter breeze i see as a one-year he's, he's play. guaranteed to not be a long-term starter right. um but you're okay with zeke and henry for now i would without a doubt go to the burrow side here because your team needs them and uh, you know i don't pivot down a tier. I don't go from, you know, team need. Mike's talked about this a lot before. He's been burned when y- you go with the position your team needs, but you're you're going a tier down. These are both tier one players in their respective positions. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction, a DK Metcalf signed Seahawks logo football. Yesterday, $79.85 DK Metcalf. Pretty high in those dynasty rankings for a lot of people. Hundreds of daily auctions at Pristine Auction. Check them out, pristineauction.com, and use our code BALLERS, and you get a $10 Ballers. credit. Yeah, a sultry $10 credit for Ballers. your first sports memorabilia purchase. <laughs> a disturbing $10 credit using the code BALLERS, Ballers. at pristineauction.com. I'm going to hit the outro button before more of those uh, <laughs> noises come out of Jason or Mike's mouth. Thanks for tuning in, listening, supporting the show. We appreciate you guys, and we'll be back on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.